Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. The government wants us to believe that we have nothing to fear from its extensive surveillance programs, as long as we haven't done anything wrong. Don't buy into it. Adhering to every law doesn't guarantee safety. The government's definition of a threat is very broad, leading to the unwarranted surveillance of innocent law-abiding Americans on a massive scale. For example, it recently came to light that the White House, exploiting privacy loopholes, has been bypassing the Fourth Amendment by compensating AT&T to grant federal, state, and local law enforcement access to phone records of Americans not suspected of any crime without a warrant. This surpasses the NSA's metadata collection program. Operational during the Obama, Trump, and now the Biden administrations, this covert surveillance program, formerly called Hemisphere, now named Data Analytical Services, uses its connection with the White House to evade numerous privacy and transparency laws. According to Senator Ron Wyden, Hemisphere has operated without oversight for over a decade, purportedly targeting drug traffickers. This is how the government routinely violates the law, all under the guise of national security. More than a trillion domestic phone records undergo scrutiny annually through this extensive surveillance initiative, targeting individuals without warrants, not just those suspected of criminal activity, but also anyone they may be in contact with, including spouses, children, parents, and friends. Hemisphere is not solely utilized by law enforcement agencies focused on drug crimes to bypass the Fourth Amendment. Those trained on the program include postal workers, prison officials, highway patrol officers, border cops, and the National Guard. This program is prone to abuse, and you can be certain that it's being exploited. Surveillance, digital tracking, and the data mining of the American people, tools of compliance and control wielded by the government, have not made America safer, and certainly do not contribute to safeguarding our freedoms. In fact, America will remain at risk, as long as the US government is permitted to violate the Constitution. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. The Fourth Amendment was designed to act like a protective shield around our persons, property, activities, communications, and movements. It's meant to keep the government out of our private affairs, except in specific exceptional situations. These situations are clearly outlined. Government officials must have probable cause that criminal activity is occurring, a higher legal standard than reasonable suspicion, as mandated by the Constitution, before they can search an individual or their property. Regrettably, all three branches of government, the legislatures, courts, and executive offices, have granted the police state significant latitude in circumventing the Fourth Amendment. Consequently, on a daily basis, Americans are already compelled to disclose the most intimate details of who we are, our biological makeup, genetic blueprints, and biometrics, facial characteristics and structure, fingerprints, iris scans, etc., just to overcome the increasingly daunting hurdle that now defines life in the United States. We are essentially considered guilty until proven innocent. Unrestricted widespread surveillance is the embodiment of a government that has become lawless, acting on its own accord without regard for the Constitution. Dragnet surveillance, geofencing, fusion centers, smart devices, behavioral threat assessments, terror watch lists, facial recognition, snitch tip lines, biometric scanners, pre crime, DNA databases, data mining, precognitive technology contact tracing apps, 
all of these elements contribute to a world where, on any given day, the average person is monitored, surveilled, spied on, and tracked in over 20 different ways by both government and corporate entities. This unsettling new era of government and corporate spying means that we are being observed, listened to, tracked, followed, mapped, bought, sold, and targeted every second of every day. This transformation has been facilitated by a global cadre of techno-tyrants, electronic eavesdroppers, robotic snoops, and digital peeping toms. The government possesses an extensive array of surveillance tools to monitor our movements, track our spending, and uncover any aspects of our thoughts, actions, and social connections that might put us on the government's watch list, regardless of any wrongdoing on our part. Adding to the ways in which the techno-corporate state and the U.S. government are working together to erode individual privacy rights is the Biden administration's recent push to leverage the capabilities of artificial intelligence while ostensibly claiming to safeguard citizens from harm. In his executive order concerning artificial intelligence, President Biden is advocating for guidelines on the government's use of AI, while simultaneously asserting that corporations should safeguard consumer privacy. It's ironic that the same government covertly intruding on our privacy rights wants to position itself as the guardian of those rights. Consider this. How can you trust a government that consistently bypasses the Constitution and undermines our rights? It's simply not possible. A government that habitually li- Power at almost every turn cannot be relied upon. At the very least, you should not entrust the government with your privacy, property, or freedoms. Whatever else it may be, a threat, a menace, a danger, the US government certainly isn't prioritizing our best interests. Keep in mind that the fundamental role of a good government is to safeguard the lives and liberties of its citizens. Unfortunately, what we're dealing with falls far short of an institution committed to protecting the lives and liberties of the people in almost every aspect. The government has a track record of shamelessly exploiting national emergencies for its own questionable purposes. They has been capitalizing on such crises for years to increase its control over an unsuspecting and largely trusting population. This is precisely where we find ourselves now. In the midst of a showdown between the rights of the individual and the so-called emergency state. All those cherished freedoms we hold dear, the ones protected by the Constitution, affirming our right to free speech and assembly, due process, privacy, bodily integrity, and protection from unwarranted police seizures and searches, all become meaningless when the government and its agents can ignore those restrictions on government overreach as they please. This is the harsh reality of life in the American police state. Our supposed rights have been reduced to mere technicalities in the face of the government's ongoing power grabs. While surveillance may take various forms and occur in diverse situations, the consistent factor is a blatant disregard for the rights of the citizenry. With each court decision that allows the government to operate beyond the rule of law, every piece of legislation that curtails our freedoms, and every instance of government misconduct that goes unpunished, we are gradually being conditioned to accept a society in which the Constitution holds no significance. Any government effort to infringe upon the privacy rights of the citizens or establish a system enabling the targeting, tracking, monitoring, and singling out of the populace should be approached with great caution. Dragnet surveillance in an era of pre-crime policing and overcriminalization essentially amounts to a fishing expedition conducted without a warrant, an overt attempt to bypass the Fourth Amendment's warrant requirement and prohibition of unreasonable searches and seizures. What we require is a digital no trespassing sign that safeguards our privacy rights and upholds our entitlement to be left alone. On a broader scale, what we truly need is a government that respects the rights of the citizenry and adheres to the law. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. 
their efforts are truly commendable and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.